But it's something people are not ready to hear. America's military preys on minors using propaganda in order to enforce authoritarian views which keep the working class down. Hold your horses, Tyler, I'm not done yet. Notice how I didn't say anything about veterans in that. That doesn't change the fact that over half of the enlisted military members in the United States are under the age of 25. Most of them join before the age of 20. This is usually when people have to start making hard decisions about health insurance and schooling, many of which are not afforded to the average US citizen. The military preys on this. So do police forces, with over 20% of them being veterans. I personally don't think that a lot of Americans really give a fuck what happens with our military, but considering that over half of our taxes go to the military and that pulling out of Afghanistan did shit all, I really think that instead of supporting the troops, maybe we should start supporting kids before they have to be troops. Instead of sending recruiters to high schools and kids into wars they can't win. Men and women can never just be friends. Somebody always wants more. It might be hidden deep down inside in their subconscious, but somebody always wants more. The Native American genocide was more deadly than the Holocaust. More lives were lost and it lasted a hell of a lot longer. In fact, Native Americans today still don't get equal treatment. They still aren't getting treated as they should, as the people who originally owned this land. And the only reason why we continue to celebrate holidays like the 4th of July and Thanksgiving, even though we know it hurts them, is because our ancestors were the perpetrators. And God forbid we believe that our ancestors did anything wrong. The equivalent of this would be if Germans celebrated the Holocaust every year as though it was something positive to happen. Don't try to argue with me about how this was years and years and years and years ago. Because again, Native Americans are still being affected by this to this day. And we have to acknowledge that at some point. I don't care what a woman wears or how she carry herself. That does not subject nobody to raping her, touching her, molesting her, etc. I was sitting around having a conversation in the shop and baby, these church folks be the worst. This man had the audacity. He wasn't even on the team. He was on the other team. But he had the audacity to say that if he had a daughter, she would not be wearing certain clothes. And I said, why does that matter? Talking about she going to be wholesome and she going to walk out with this and that. Understand me. If a person put on a certain form of clothing and it make you want to touch them or do something to them, the problem is with you. It's not on that woman. Can we stop with the freaking ignorance? I don't care if I walk out this house but booty naked. That does not give you the right to touch me, to talk to me a certain way, or to view me a certain way. Y'all need to fix y'all mental because that just ain't it. Adoption is a stupid ass suggestion to offer women in lieu of abortion. People need to recognize that abortion, adoption, and raising an unwanted child are all three different issues. Abortion is not such an easy, frivolous decision that people want to pretend that it is. And if a woman is making the decision that she feels is best for her to have an abortion, that should be respected by everyone. Now we're going to skip adoption just for a second, but we're going to get back to that one because I got a lot to fucking say. Let's go on to the raising a child that you don't fucking want. You cannot force a woman who doesn't want to have children to be a mother. That's how situations like Casey Anthony and Pearl Fernandez come around and all the other women who have killed their children because they didn't fucking want them in the first place. Even if they had other kids, that one specifically they didn't fucking want so they killed them. Now does that seem like a really great idea because quite frankly that's a horrible situation to happen. Now let's go into the fact of when people go well if you don't want to have a kid put them up for adoption. That's why we have over half a million children in the fucking foster care system as is. Not all children that are put up for adoption are there because their parents didn't want them. CPS is a fucking business all its own that traffics children that we act like is a whole normal thing. Now let's go ahead and fast forward to those years of after the child has been in the foster care system because hey not all children get adopted right? Those kids get thrown out into the middle of the fucking world where they don't know what the fuck's going on they've never had someone to properly guide them throughout their entire lives oh and then there's the fact that they don't fucking know where they come from you know some fucked up shit when you're filling out those medical charts and they're asking about your mother and your father's medical history and all that and if you've been adopted and you don't know those things because you've never been in contact with your biological parents you don't know how to fill those things out or for the children that actually get adopted and they grow up and feeling like they never fucking belong or how about the fact that people weaponize you being adopted against you that's a fucking fun one or there's the fucked up odyssey you get to go on when you're trying to figure out where the fuck you come from. Generally, this curiosity gets peaked in your teens and your 20s where you want to find out where the fuck you come from. Some people in their 30s or 40s, it doesn't fucking matter when it happens, but you have that small fear in you of finding out exactly what fucking happened that you're not with your biological parents. And unfortunately for some people, when they find out their parents didn't want them, that's another fucking mindfuck. 
Me personally, I have the best case scenario out of being adopted. Like both my biological and adoptive family all loved me and they all wanted me. It was just some fucked up shit that happened in my childhood, which led me to where I'm at now. Or how about that fun part in school when they ask you about your family tree and you're like, guess what? I don't fucking know. And then the teacher just sits there and stares at you all awkward because she didn't expect that shit to happen to her this year. Adoption and abortion are not on the same fucking playing field. Procreation for the sake of power is stupid as fuck and it's only going to backfire on the people that support the system that forces it. There is already too many adults, teens, and children dealing with the emotional, physical, and psychological traumas that has come along with being adopted or in foster care. Stop using adoption as if it's some reasonable bargaining chip for why you want to have control over someone else's body. Oh, this one's easy. Uh, I've been in the restaurant industry for over 20 years. Been bartending for about 15. I'm actually on my way to work right now. My uniform's underneath. This is something people really don't understand and are not ready to understand. Doubling the tax does not equal a 20% tip. It doesn't equal a 15% tip. It is not a good tip. Never double the tax. Now, whatever your total of your bill is, if you round up the first number and double that, that's 20%. That's more accurate. Thank you, good night. That if you wanna fast track your progress and your success in life, you gotta stop hiding behind the screen. So I listen to a ton of podcasts and interviews throughout the week, probably more than I listen to music. And one consistent thing that I've noticed in every single interview or podcast that I listen to is that a successful person, when they were elevated to a certain uh, you know, level in their career or in their life, their life was taken to the next level because of someone that they met in person. Instagram DMs, TikTok DMs, all that stuff is great for people that you cannot reach across the world. You know, I, th I think it's a very uh, resourceful tool but the connections will be deeper, longer lasting, and they will probably benefit you more if you make connections in person. Even if you just take your laptop and go work at a coffee shop instead of behind your desk at home, step outside of your door and make something happen, go work somewhere else, because even though nothing's gonna happen every single time that you go out in public, you at least increasing your chances of meeting someone that can change your life professionally. That autism is genetic. I have three special needs children, all boys, I have a 15-year-old, a 5-year-old, and a soon-to-be 3-year-old. My 15-year-old was diagnosed with autism about 12 years ago. Okay, he was 3 at the time. My 5-year-old was diagnosed with autism when he was 2. My soon-to-be 3-year-old was just diagnosed with autism a couple of months ago. Now, why do I think that this is genetic again? Well, the difference between my 15-year-old and my two smaller children is that they have different dads. Okay, the only common denominator is me. The only common denominator to get a little more you know wood going into the fire my parents only had me i am the only daughter now we know that autism is common in boys so my grandmother meaning my mother's mother had five children one boy four girls my tias and my theo my theo had one son guess what he's autistic my tias all had girls we all they all had girls my cousins are predominantly female now when we started to have children, the boys that were born, most of them are autistic. Again, I'm not a geneticist, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but common denominators, people, come on. Now, is it easy for me to come on here on this platform and tell you that I honestly, in my heart, believe that I am the reason for my son's autism? No, it's not. I struggle with it mentally daily. However, I am urging families with individuals that have autism to look at their family and not the people in your household. Look at your families as a whole, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your cousins, your mom's cousin's cousin. Look to see if anybody else has special needs. It is time for us to advocate to these geneticists that this is a real issue. This can be fixed. We can give these children like the individuals that have Down syndrome, early intervention, there has to be a genetic marker somewhere. There has to be. Poor 
very wishy-washy when it comes to cancel culture. Now, I know y'all about to be tight with me, but let me explain myself. I remember when the whole Michael Vick thing happened, like afterwards, he was trying to donate money to like shelters and stuff and showed his redemption. And of course, what he did was unspeakable, but y'all would not let him get redemption. But a lot of y'all don't get mad about Mark Wahlberg when he has an attempted murder charge because he punched somebody in because they were a certain race and called people the N-word and threw stuff at them. Y'all say, oh, well, he was young, but then in 2016, he tried to get a pardon. Or like y'all got mad when Gina Rodriguez said the N-word in a song. But then Doja Cat can say, even though she's been linked to all those white supremacist groups or whatever. Of course, that's gonna just be a rumor. Y'all was in an uproar when Rihanna got beat, rightfully so. But I did not hear that much of an uproar when it was Johnny Depp and the roles were reversed and he got beat by his wife. They cancel Ellen, I mean, rightfully so. But how does Wendy still have her job? Like, how many strikes does she get? Make it make sense.